Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. As we're all uh, only too well aware, at the present moment, there is a very horrible war going on uh, between Russia and the Ukraine and uh, the rights and wrongs of it uh, not for us to concern ourselves with but we just pray that peace would come and that the situation there would be sorted out it seems hard to believe that there is going to come a day when nation shall not learn war anymore when they will turn all their weapons into uh, farm instruments it just seems an impossibility but that is what the bible promises promises us when we talk about end times uh, eschatology is the big word they use for it when we talk about that we look at the what the Bible teaches is going to happen and uh, of course we're all only too well aware that there's going to be wars rumors of wars there's going to be earthquakes in diverse places there's going to be famines there's going to be pestilence and plague the greenery of the world the forests grasslands will be decimated the oceans will be so polluted that um, fish will die by the millions all of these things are foretold to happen and right now we all must realize that these things are happening before our very eyes so we see ourselves as being in what is generally called the last days now many christians take the view that the last days are going to be or, or when it comes up to the time when the Lord will come back for his, his church that it's going to be wonderful and we're really looking forward to that great and glorious day when we will be taken up to be with the Lord in the sky and it is a wonderful thing but it's also going to be a dreadful day it's going to be an awful day for many those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior those who have not found the way the truth and the life to them it will be a dreadful awful day and it behoves us while we are able to continue to proclaim the Word of God to everyone that will listen in the hope that by so doing we may be part of saving someone saving some soul but when I looked at the scripture and I was thinking Peter on the day of Pentecost referred to that as being the last days and uh, I guess 
in the scheme of things, the last days have been going on for the last 2,000 years. And we don't know when the end will actually come of the world as we know it now. The only thing we do know is that we must personally be right with God. Each of us needs to be sure that we are right with God so that when he comes, he will come and take us to be with him. But as you read that scripture this morning, in some respects it's not all totally doom and gloom because here's the promises that God has made. There's going to come a time and it says in the last days or the latter times there's going to come a time when people will be at peace. People will be living in their homes, in their towns, in their farms and people will be gathering together and saying, hey, let's go shoot over to Israel. Let's go to the house of God. Let's go to the temple. Let's go and there worship the Lord. And he will tell us and teach us of his ways. And at that time, the nations will be, well, there won't be anybody going to war anymore. We don't know precisely when this will be. But as sure as eggs, it will happen because God has promised it. There is going to come a time when we won't hear of these dreadful things happening. War is hideous and horrible. And the innocent, as we all know, are the ones who suffer the most. God, in his infinite mercy, wants to reach out and bring peace to the earth. And he's established a church. And that church has a duty and an obligation to preach peace and to preach righteousness. There's so much that is hard for us to understand. Leaders who seem to be so wrong at times do so much that is right. Three or four years ago, the, the Pope announced to the world, normal Roman Catholic teaching, that the only way you could achieve salvation was through faith in Mother Church, not faith in Jesus Christ, that is a horrible doctrine as far as he is concerned. Faith in Mother Church will save you. One noted world leader came on the internet and challenged the Pope's statement saying that the only way you could find salvation, forgiveness of sin, was faith in Jesus Christ. He alone could save, not the church. But the problem with that is that the man who said it is Mr. Putin, the Russian leader, who right now is vilified. It is so hard to decide who is right and who is wrong in anything. And even good people make mistakes and do very, very wrong things. But what Mr. Putin said was true. There is only one way to find salvation, forgiveness and cleansing of our sin. And that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. And the scripture calls on us to walk in the light. He is the true light that lights the darkness of every man that comes into the world. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from or what your background. You don't even have to know much. 
I was listening to a missionary talking about uh, an experience he had in Burkina Faso. It used to be called Upper Volta. He went there and uh, in the marketplace he heard one of the locals preaching about Jesus Christ. He didn't hadn't realized that there were Christians in that community. So he went to him and began to talk with him. And he found that the man knew almost nothing about the Bible. He had heard about Noah and the ark. He thought that was about a hundred years before. He thought Jesus had only just been crucified by some horrible people called Romans. But that in itself was wonderful because the story was so fresh and so real to him and so he couldn't help but preach it to his people it made me realize when i heard the missionary speaking you didn't need to know a lot but what you did to need to know is jesus christ and him crucified and if we put our trust in that, Jesus Christ and him crucified, and share our faith with others, then we truly will be seen as being about the Lord's business when he comes. For he is looking for a people who will be out doing his work. That's why he's placed the church here. That's why you and I accepted Jesus Christ as our saviour somewhere along the line in our life. Christ Christianity is a bit like the virus. It's something that's there to be passed on. And we want everyone to be infected with the gospel. We want as many people as possible to know the way, the truth and the life because we are going to go, have to go through all of those trials and tribulations. I would imagine the people in the Ukraine right now, if you were to stand up and preach about trials and tribulations that are coming upon the earth, they would almost laugh at you and say, what could be worse than what we are going through? Someone perhaps in World War II in the midst of the Blitz. What could be worse? They couldn't conceive of any greater judgment. And yet, there is a judgment coming on the whole earth. Many of us believe that this current pandemic, as they call it, is a judgment for we are told that there will be a worldwide pestilence we're also told that mankind will not repent we're also told that people will not cry out to the lord but rather at worst they will curse god and blame him for everything and how often do we hear that how often do we hear people who say they don't believe in God blaming the God that they don't believe in? Or well, for us who do believe in God, for us who do believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, for those of us who have put our trust in him, we really need to be putting our faith into action because the world literally is going to hell around us. It's not nice out there. I said a few weeks ago, speaking of what Mother Teresa said when she received the Nobel Peace Prize. And I don't usually quote Roman Catholic saints, but what she said resonated with me because it was so true. I think it was in 1979. She got the Peace Prize and she stood there
in front of all those people and said, we are at war. We are at war. As long as mothers murder their own babies, we are at war. What hope is there for you and me if we live in such a society? You know that the government has just announced that the abortion pill will be readily available by mail if a young girl gets in the family way she can go to her school guidance people they can arrange for her to go to or rather to get the pill posted to her nobody need know anything about it all done all discreet all very nice What kind of a society do we have? I listened to uh, the last words of a little boy, six years old, abused to death by his caregivers, and somebody reported him as saying, nobody loves me, and I thought, if that's the world in which I live, I don't want to live in this world. I hate this world if that's what it is. I used to think that the worst song in the world was that song, the little boy that Santa Claus forgot. But that's a song, the reality the suffering it's just appalling and the world has nothing to offer but we in the church have we've got Jesus Christ and him crucified he and the only hope of the world the only hope and we need to be sharing that in every way we can and if we're not sure how to share it let's pray and ask God Let's pray and ask God to give us the opportunity. Let's pray and ask God to show us how to do it. I'm not saying you have to grab your Bible and run over the road and challenge your atheistic neighbor. I'm not saying you have to go and, like that man I've spoken of in Auckland who used to get on the bus and, and look around until he saw someone sitting by the window with a vacant seat beside them. And he'd go and plonk himself down beside them and then open his Bible and, and start preaching to them. And then when he got thrown off the bus by the driver at church on Sunday, he stood up and said, I'm persecuted for the faith. I was preaching the word and they threw me off the bus. And I thought, oh, well, I wouldn't have let him on it. But anyway, <laughs> I couldn't help it. This is the world I live in. The world needs Jesus. It truly needs Jesus. We grumble and complain about our parliament. They need Jesus Christ. We grumble about our councils. They need Jesus Christ. The facts of the matter are we all need Jesus Christ. And we need him now. Let us therefore be praying that God will give us the opportunity and that God will show us how we can reach out with this wonderful Saviour to this miserable, sin-sick world, this world that is so much darkness. And here is the light. I am the light of the world, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ. Let's pray. Merciful, mighty God, I pray that each of us might truly truly be given an opportunity to share our faith with someone else and that in so doing we may strengthen and encourage someone who is in need and this we ask in Jesus name for Jesus sake this morning